are in Florence, in Convinto della Calza, which is hosting today the 23rd meeting of the Electricity Regulatory Forum, which brings together national regulatory authorities, TSOs, the European Commission and Member State Governments. We are using this opportunity to talk to Lord Mogg, who is the President of the CER, Chairman of the Board of ACER and Chairman of ICER. Good afternoon, Lord Morg. I hope you? that the meeting is going well. Very, very well. So, ACER, ICER and SEER. What is the role and place for these regulatory bodies as the rules and markets evolve? What benefits can the cooperation and collaboration through these bodies bring to regulators? I think you've, even in the question, you have summarized what the different bodies do. But let me take them one by one. SEER, which is the Council of European Energy Regulators, has been running for probably over a decade. And that's essentially to manage the cooperation, the informal cooperation between Europe's regulators. It also concentrates on two aspects which are not covered by the agency, namely consumer issues and the second in terms of international relations. So we tend to concentrate on those aspects. And their importance of the link between the two is that I chair, I'm president of SEER, I'm also chair of the uh, European, um, the, the regulators, the board of regulators for the European agency. The agency recently established is deliberately designed, the board of regulators, to have a director in Ljubljana with some 50, 60 staff to run some legal requirements that it has to run to look at, uh, across the market and give a European dimension to it. And I chair the board of regulators, which are the national regulatory authorities. The agency's title is Agency for the Cooperation of Energy Regulators. So cooperation is essential, hence your question. ISA is the new kid on the block. ISA was established in the World Forum for Energy in Athens. It was established in order to look across the whole world and provide collaboration in a very virtual working way using not lots of meetings or heavy bureaucracy but to look at the sort of challenges that you get as an energy regulator in developing countries, developed countries and to prepare every three years there is a world, a world forum of energy to prepare some work for that so that there is a continuity and a collaboration. How can we put energy consumers at the heart of energy policy development and discussions? Well, I put it back, how can we not put the energy consumer? As an energy regulator for, the, for Great Britain, I have the statutory, the principal responsibility for putting energy consumers as my principal objective, energy consumers present and future. Why? Well, first, because all the energy, the whole purpose of having energy is to provide the driving force for industry to provide the domestic power for ourselves. So we are looking at providing at the lowest economic cost to make sure in usually monopolistic situations that consumers are not being ripped off by companies. So this is increasingly a worldwide activity. It needs a, a great deal of attention. So there's both protection of consumers that we in SEER, in this case, are very keen in produ producing a vision to look forward to how energy consumers could be, could be helped better in the future, and empowerment, allowing consumers better to understand the bills they get, how to search for the best deal, how to avoid the difficulties that are sometimes confronted. Once again, regulators are there to facilitate as well as to monitor. They're not police, they're basically police and help helpers in making the consumer <coughs> small business, big business and, of course, domestic consumers, all the same. We need to tackle climate change, but how do these objectives interact with energy markets? Well, first they interact with the people producing energy. Energy consumption um, by transport it, it often causes the most emissions, harmful emissions that occur in CO2 damage to the ozone layers. And irrespective of the now enormous importance that is being placed by the world, by most of the world at least, in terms of the damage that we're doing and the potential warming up of our climate, you need to have ways of ensuring that um, appropriate measures that are developed by government are actually 
work and actually deliver. Now, energy regulators in some cases can be, as we are in the UK, delivering policies, delivering um, sub subsidies uh, which we manage. In the UK at the moment we are currently managing something like four and a half billion, billion euros of each year of support in terms of getting renewable energy arrangements and energy support. So an energy regulator in some ways is a means of delivering some energy policies but increasingly it's also a means of advising governments about the, the better and more appropriate ways of delivering it. But I think probably thirdly and crucially what energy regulators most deliver is stability and confidence. Confidence that uh, unlike governments which go through a cycle of elections, we will be there for the long term, or fairly long term. In that case, I've been an energy regulator for nearly 10 years, so to give you a good example. The, what this does to a company who wants to invest is to look at what the, energy, what the regime, the regulatory regime is in a different country. The more stability, the more predictability, the more economically driven process, the more confident such investments will be made. And investment is the heart of providing the modifications and fundamental changes that will be necessary in the next 10, 5, 10 years towards delivering a much less um, damaging uh, energy arrangements for the world. So energy regulators contribute a lot as well as being pleased. Thank you very much, Lord Monk, and enjoy your time in Florence.